We're doing this interview in Jamaica. My mum, when she came over here, she was walking around with no, no shoes on. As I said, she's a diabetic. From 70 feet up, I jumped next to a pipe. It's like someone take me out my room and put me right downstairs on my feet. She never died right away. But all it might be what she should have done, open her window and go through the, the window at the back. And that box cost her life, my sister life. It was a sad day that for me. In 1964. You was born in 1964? No, I was born in 1951. Where? In Jamaica. In a place called Moors in Rock River. Rock River. What parish? In, in Clarendon. 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 All right. Can you remember the early days as a young man? I can remember the early days when I leave from Clarendon and I went to St. Catherine to live with my grandparents. Um, and, the, and that was a place called Connors. Connors in St. Catherine. In St. Catherine, yes. Can you remember the, the age? What age I think I was about, well, no, I can't remember the age, but I can't remember the age. But I know after I went to live with my my grandmother then my grandmother gave me away to my auntie so i live with my auntie from i say about nine from the age of nine till about 13 when i leave the west indies uh, we're not pushing it so far so can you remember school in, in jamaica going well to i don't think i just spend a lot of time going to school because when I was a kid back home as a young, I don't, to me, all my, it was interesting mostly is the goat and the cow, I have to tie out the goat. And many times when I reached to school, my auntie used to call me, and you remember my auntie calling me back and saying, you forget to tie out the goat and the cow. And by the time I have to turn back to go back to, you know, tie the goat and get back to school, the next thing I know, the teacher was and I was going around the school, a place called Gingerhead School yeah. in Connors. And he always, I always remember this, he always said, we are the late comers because we turn up to school late. Yeah. But yeah, away from that, yeah, it was, it was all right. I remember Christmas all those times was a happy time for me when I was younger. All right, Christmas time. Yeah, Christmas. Because he used to get a big Christmas tree into the school and the office used to have a load of presents, I remember that. Yeah. You know, and everyone could go and pick a, pick something from underneath the tree. Okay. So I remember that. Did your mom and dad went to England or what? Wow. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I didn't I did not know my mother or father until when I reached England. Because I said they gave us to our grandparents. They gave, they gave us to the grandparents, and then, as I said, the grandparents, my grandma gave me to my auntie, so my, I would say my auntie raised me until when I left Jamaica in 1964, at the age of 13, when I left Jamaica. And then I, so who sent for you? My parents, my mom and dad. And they was it, they, so they left before you recognized them, you say? As yes, I did not know any of them until when I reached, reached to England. So, did they used to write? They used to write to you or anything like that? Well, let's say they used to write to the me auntie and yeah. my grandmother, but no, I can't remember my mother ever write anything to me. No, you heard I can't. About them I heard. I heard about the story. About they used to send present. Yes. Used to send like Christmas present for us. Mm -hmm. 
whether we get it or not, but I know my mum used to send presents for us and things like that. Presents like, can you remember anything? Yeah, she used to send us like shoes and clothes, you know, and things like that. We used to get things like, and they used to send us money and all. Okay. Only one thing when they send the money, we never seem to get the money. The, yeah. <laughs> the parent, the uh, my grand, my auntie, uh, my grandmother, you know, they usually keep it. Right. Right. Before you reach England now, yeah, can you remember? that you was going to come to England, like someone say, that your parents were sending for you. Can you remember anything like that? I, I, used, I remember when I used to have to go to the to Kingston to take my papers out, and my aunt used to take me. Right. So I, yeah, I think I did have an idea that my parents were sending for me. What age was that? Uh, I think between 12 and, between 12 and 12 to 13, because I say I left there when I was 13. So, you the paper. papers and yeah. Right. What was the thought of England before you reached? England? Well, let's say when I when I realized I was coming over here, I was very glad, but I can't say I was a thought of what it would be like because I didn't know. Yeah. You know, but I know I was coming here to meet my parents, so I cannot say what it would be like yeah. until when I come over here. Then I see the difference between over there and in Jamaica. Then, the day of travelling. The day of travelling, 1964, I think it was about in December 1964, we came over on a, at the time a BOAC plane. Oh, yeah. uh, we, come, we, we fly from Kingston to, to Manchester, Manchester Airport, and at the time it was only Manchester Airport, just small, it was a very small airport at the time. But now you can see how big it is now, you know. Travelling, can you remember the travelling on the aeroplane first? I remember, I remember getting on the plane, yeah. but you know, it's like like on every plane, going on every plane, you know, you sit down on the food, just the same, yeah. By yourself? No, no, I, it wasn't, I, I came with my brother and my sister. Right, it was, how many brothers and sisters you got? At, at the time, I did have a, I came over with one brother, and one sister. Was any left behind in Jamaica? No, we, 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 no, it's only my next one sister I've got left that stay in Jamaica. She never, she only travel on holiday, but she never really traveled to live over there. Right. I don't know why the family left her out, right. but she was the only one that never traveled out of, out of five of us. Older sister? No, she's the one after me. Okay. Right. And at the moment, it's only us two left. Okay, let's go over. Yeah, yeah. Reaching down in Manchester Airport, who came for you at the airport? My dad, my dad, come and pick us up from there. How did you recognize your dad? Well, it, we, oh, we also, a lady did came out with us. Okay, I, a I had a had us lady come with us. So, we did, she, my mom sent a lady from over here. I don't know if she was a family or not, but I know a lady came for us and she came with me my brother and my sister and so my dad know who she was so so that was it yeah what was the thought of your dad at the time did you have pictures of him before i see what he looked like or what no i did not have no picture of him i didn't have nothing of my dad until when i came over here i didn't know even know what he looked like so when he came up at the airport for you what was it like <laughs> all we do is grab a big hug you know at the time, I just said I was 13 years of age, so we did a big hug. And it's when we go back home now, then I, when I saw my mom, that's when I first know what my mom looked like. Oh, you didn't know? I did not know my mom, I did not know what my mom looked like. Other brothers as well, same thing? I, I can't say whether, because there was all, he was older than me, so, okay. I can't, so I can't say whether he did know my mom before. But I'm certainly my younger sister, the, the last one, I don't think she can remember who, who my mom was. Wow. You know. So what do you thought of England coming down on it? Well, down what the, 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 as I said before, when I first saw all these houses, I thought yeah. it was factories. Yeah. Right? Until when I go inside of the houses, then I realize how nice to, you know, inside look. Mm -hmm. Because my mom's house was, it was nice inside. So that's when I really realized what it's like with the houses them over here but it was very cold wow. you know i mean if 
in the nineteen sixty was very, very, very cold. I mean, cold. You just can you remember the month you came? December. And December was very cold. Yeah, yeah up, foggy. It was fog, and all those kind of a thing. And don't forget. Well, at the time I did not know because November was bonfire night and you know in them days when bonfire night, the 5th of November, they usually bon and after bonfire night, every place fog. And then they used to have like a cold fire in them days. Well, now, nowadays you know they've got those essential heat, you know, they don't give out all them bad smoke anymore. You know, so that's what it was like in them days. When I was a kid, you know, as I said, I, I used to have to tie your goat and do this and do that, care fresh water. Nowadays it's easy now because there's pipe. But in my days there was no pipe with no water. You have to go to the stream and carry the water on top of your head and things like that. Well, a lot of people might have said, but I know that's what I used to do when I was a kid, to go to the river to collect the water and to take it yeah. take it home. But so that's why I said in a way I was glad to get away from that thing. Because when I go over there in England, everything was already in the house. Away from the toilet was outside. The toilet was outside. Nowadays everything inside, isn't it? What, that's in England? Is that yeah, 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 the toilet when we came the toilet was outside. If you want to use the toilet, you've got to go outside to use the toilet. There was no toilet in my mother's house, but there was outside Next to the house, you don't have to walk very far, mm -hmm. but the, the toilet was there. Okay. Yeah. Um, going to school in the UK? Yeah, I went to a school on, uh, on Stratford Road called Old Trafford Secondary Boys School. This is Manchester? Yeah, it's Manchester, yes. Off Stratford Road, yeah. near Manchester United Football Ground. Yeah, I, I think it's still there. I'm not so certain, but I think it's still there, that school. I could be wrong. Yeah, so that, that was a that his school. His school was a happy school when I go there, because she even where, uh, but you know some of the teachers. I think some of the teacher at the time in them when I came over, was, to me anyway. I think she even one teacher particularly. I think he was a bit biased. I don't know why, but he he used to say, he used to said to us. Uh, with all the black kids that was at the school at the time. Yeah. And, and sometimes he's on the, the pulpit, you know, I used to take a semi in the morning and he, and he used to beat on the, the pulpit like that. And he said, all you, you want to hear our voice instead of hearing him knocking on the pulpit, okay. right? And sometimes, uh, to be honest, you know, sometimes we, we laugh, we laugh. Right, and some of the black kids, and sometimes you hear him go mad and still, and sometimes he used to say, oh, you black kids, you've got chips on your shoulders. Wow. You know, I remember that particularly, that's what he used to say. I, I know his name, but I will not, I won't mention his name because I, he's not around now. I think he must be passed away. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, was there lots of black kids in Yeah, there was uh, quite a few of them there. Not in the same class, yeah. but quite a few of them there, you know. And some of them turned out famous because some of them was in the street sensation. Okay. You know, the band. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. some of them turned out even when you think that we wouldn't turn to anything, <laughs> some of them did make it famous, yeah. you know. Yeah. While you was at the bakery, where were you living? I was living at, in Mosaida. With who? With my mom and dad. At 40 Meadow Street, Mosaida, I was living. Was happy? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was happy because my mom had a great big house there. You know, what size? A, a big, very big, big house because he got like upstairs. He got very attic. He got the attic, you know. And I used to be all the way up in the attic, attic. And my mom and dad lived downstairs in the middle. My uncle lived in the centre, and there was a lady who lived there as well who live in the house because when my mom bought the house she was already there so my mom tell her she can stay there because she was getting ready to come home to Jamaica. She, 
she was packing up her bag to come home and that's at the time when if were, you, were your brother and sister living with you as well yeah my brother and sister yes yeah, we all was living there all together yeah but i think i was about 19 and 1920 at the time when you up the fire what um what fire are we talking about now right the fire in 1972 there was a fire meadow street yeah. where the house catch fire where five of five people lost their life there at the same time and these are some of the people you just mentioned before who live in the house yeah some of the people that was living in the house yeah can you remember the fire like the building yeah house? i remember the fire go on and uh I was 70 feet up in up into the attic. Yes. My dad was living right downstairs at the back room, me, and my brother was in in the front room. And he lay there on the second floor. A lady, the one I said that was packing up. packing up her bag to come home. And then the next a bit further up because it was a very big house. My uncle and her children used to live there, but. Somehow, my mom and my uncle did already leave for work. Yeah. So they was in the house at the time when the fire started. I don't know how the fire started, but after a while, when the police then investigate, I think they said that it was a perfume eater that blow up or something that caused the fire. Because in the morning, after everything died down, if you go to the back, there was a perfume eater at the back. And I think it's when my brother come from coming because we used to go out partying at that time, you know, you're only 19 years of age. You know, you're young, so we go partying. And I think it's when he come home from work and he used to be, as I say, he used to call in them days yeah. and we used to like the perfume eater. And I think the, the lady that was going home, I said she was going home with that big box. There was a big box in the road. And when I came home from work the night before, I said to the, my dad, I, no, I said to my mom, that box is in the way, you know, you've got to shift it. So she, the lady said, oh, she can't shift because she's, it's her box. She's packing, she's packing in the box to go home. And she got no way to put it. So anyway, I said, when my dad come from work the same evening, it was, it was on a Wednesday night when we come from work. I remember because the, the house got burned on the Thursday morning. Yeah. And I said to my dad, and my dad went to the lady and he said to her, you, she got to move, and she'd start a big argument. So my dad said to her, okay, leave, the, leave it, leave it. And that box cost her life, my sister life, my uncle two children life, and my sister son life. Five people that box because she would not listen to move the box because in them days, the, the, the walk passage was dead narrow, and you have a big box, right? Until you walk straight, you have to walk sideways, right? And I think when my brother, that's only what I assume, I think when my brother come from work the night, no, when he come from partying, and he was walking through, he come home, and I think he liked the perfume eater, and he tried to get the get the perfume must be blow up on him like you know because when we come from work there was a plate with all electric shoes and we used to hang our coat up on the wall and I think instead of him he couldn't go to open the front door to throw that perfume eater when they blow up on him so he have to go the long way around he got to go through the kitchen and that's where the coat was so it might be the coat they catch fire and then with him being dozy you know coming in late and he go back in the front room and to sleep and then the coat, they might catch fire, I don't know, that's my, so what, assume, yeah. yeah, so I know all I remember when they go in the backyard, that's where the perfume uh, needs to go. Before you go into the backyard, yeah, and the, it was a morning, is it a Thursday morning, the fire? It was a Thursday morning when he, yeah, he what, was, can you remember waking up? I, I can hear a big explosion and I couldn't come through my front door. As I said, I was 70 feet up in the attic. Yeah. I couldn't go through my door. Yeah. But what I did, right, as I said, I was young and fit then. I opened the, my, my window next door and I jumped on my next door pipe. From 70 feet up, I jumped next door pipe. It's like someone take me out my room and put me right downstairs on my feet. I never ever get hurt, but all my clothes and everything got burnt. So was smoke coming through the attic? Well, I must have been asleep yeah. because after the fire, right, 
I, after the, everything died and you could stay downstairs in the bottom and look straight up right up to where my room and there was nothing there to hold it so if, if I'd ever get out the time I did yeah. might be the fire and I would have fallen right through it you were 19, what can you remember coming downstairs? Did you go back in to help anyone? What, what happened? I remember I, showed, I, I, I remember I showed to my sister and said to my sister Hang on, I try and get down and then I come try and climb up to her window at the back when I get downstairs because I couldn't go through my door, the fire was already there. So that would mean that house must have been burning a while for it to reach that far that no one could go down the stairs. Yeah. Right, because that lady, as I tell you, she was on the second floor, yeah. right? And she never died, she never died right away. But all it might be what she should have do, open her window and go through the, the window at the back. Yeah. But with her eyes, she never thinks she opened her front door and all that flame and her, her, her face and her head, oh, you should have, uh, oh. Oh, you saw her body? Oh, we, well, she never died. She died a couple of days after her face swollen up, you know, when I went to look for her in hospital, you know, her face was swollen up. But at her age, with the smoke, which she opened the door, the flame come right in on her, you see. But she, all she did have to do, leave her doors open, closed, yeah. and open her back window and just step, try and, but as I say, at her age, maybe she couldn't, uh, she couldn't do it and when I reached downstairs I remember this particularly that's when I see my dad he died through the, his wind and he's on the ground floor he died through the, the glass yeah. to get out of the get out of the the fireway but he never come through if he if my daddy opened his door yeah. might be the same thing with all the flame open the door up or he come through his his, his wind so that mean the fire must have been already get him in there so he just dived through the glass if he just dived through the glass and when I went down stairs and I go around he can't go around and have a look at my sister window yeah. where I said shout to her but I never hear no one answer oh, me I shout to her and I said I try and get down and come up and when I went reach downstairs and look up and all days I could see the fire already at the window so it's nothing I could do so you, you know that your sister was in it? I back. know because I know every morning when when my uncle go to work, the two kids always run up to her, you know. Because she was about 15, 16 at the time. And the uncle kids all were? My, oh, there was only, might be nine or, I might be even younger. I cannot remember how old it was. But I know there was very young. I don't, I think might be, I don't think none of them was 10 yet. None of them was 10. Um, my sister, some might be, you might be, might be about ten at the time, but I can't swear on it. Yeah, so it was a, it was a sad day that for me. Oh, you remember everything about that day? What, what, about, what about your mom when she came back home? Oh, my mom was. Oh, you would have to. You, oh, my mom was so. She was dead sad. She was dead sad. My mom. You know, to lost her, all her grandchildren um, and one of her daughter, you know. And yet my brother, he never get a scratch. Not even a scratch, he never get my brother. So where were you? Where was the brother? He, he was in, in the front room. And yet he's... No, when you when you're outside looking at the... Well, I didn't, I, I didn't see my brother because I didn't see my brother because we was at the back. Yeah, but right. might be after the fire, he, he might have opened the, the door and, okay. and get out that, at the front. I don't know, but I, I, I can't remember seeing him come to the back. But no, I've seen my dad drive through the, his glass window, mm -hmm. right? I get out my room, like jump on my next door pipe, like if someone just take me from my room, jump on the pipe and put me right downstairs on, on, on my legs. And, and I was all right then. I look upstairs and look up my sister's room and the fire was already there. Well, it was already in my room when I reach, you know, when I wake up. That's why I, if I did go, try to get through my, sis, in, through my door, I, would, I wouldn't be here today, you know. So but, how, how did your mom took that after that? Oh, Over the years after? Oh, months. well, I, I can't really show my mom, but every time I think about it, I still feel like if I, I could have done more which way I couldn't, you know. I think about it in my brain, 
loads and loads of time I didn't hear my sister scream or nothing I might be by the time I reached down there because there was in the center of the stairs going up you see so if the f my room was like you see like there round the corner so and yet my room was burned and if some a fire coming straight at you you expect you go through that door first isn't it so I might be there was a oh, that was a sad day are you dad how did I angry? Well, he get loads of cut with the glass when he jumped when he when he jumped through the window. You see, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so they have to take him to check up on all these things to see that he was all right. But I don't think I don't think none of us ever get over it, to be honest. Okay. So, so you you were now you're saying the second job. It was not the second job after. Where did you live after the after the fire? Where did you after the fire, we went to we live uh, on Clement Road. All of you together again. Where? Well, I still live with, I, I still live with my mom on Clement Road. Okay, mom and dad. My mom and dad on Clement Road. And your brother I, as well. And my brother. No, I think my brother find his own way. Then, and I think after leaving Clement Road, I think I start. No, going out with girls and you know okay. start staying out until when I get on my feet, okay. and that's when I. At the time, I was going out with a girl, yeah. and she ended up being my first wife. Okay, so where did you meet this? this girl? Oh, I met uh, I, I I met her at a dance. Yeah. You know, we've been going out for for a while. And, How and long is a while? I was it might be two. Three years. Okay. And so yeah, we was going off. Uh, so you used to live with her. Yeah? I used to live. I used to live with her. Yeah. After I think we lived with her after we get married. Because no, no. Before you get married, you used we, to live with her. I can't remember when I was living with her, but I know we used to see a lot, a lot of of one another. Okay. I can't remember if I. Did. Then you fall in love and get. Yeah, married. you get fall in love, get married. And have kids. Yeah, we have. I have two kids with her. Okay, and that yeah. was a happy life. <laughs> At first, okay. yeah, it, you know everything. Up is after the fire. Then I realized that I will get married to her because, as I said, when the fire, oh, everything I had burnt got burnt. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I used to wear her jeans. I have to do, at first. I did have to wear her jeans and to when I could get back on my feet to you know because all my burnt surface ticket, all those things did get burnt in the fire. Everything. Passport, this everything because the room was a right mess, wow. and then, uh, but lucky thing as I said that my room was in show, yeah, yeah. you know, and uh, I get so a bit of money. And in them days, houses was pretty cheap. And wait, wait, what you mean? People don't insure rooms back in those days. Well, I did insure mine. My mom house was in show, and I and it, I used to join it United Friendly. Okay, what's that? It used, it used to be an insurance. I insure your room? I insure my room. I never heard of that yet. Yeah, you never, yeah, but the trouble thing, I'm going to tell you a story and this is the God Almighty true. I used to, when I was young, I used to knock about with this guy and he's, and he's, I used to go and call for him on a Friday. He used to be my best mate and we used to go all over the place together. So one day I went to his, to his house to call him on a Friday and his mother called me and said, she used to call me Popeye. So I said, yes, she said, and she, this is what she said to me, Papa, have you got your room in shore? I said, no, I don't got my room in shore, because my mom in shore the house. She said to me, oh no, your room, your, your room need in shore, not your mom. You say your mom in shore the house, but your room in shore. So anyway, the, I know the insurance man, United Friend insurance man used to call around on a Friday. So the following Friday, I wait for the insurance man. And when I went home, I said to my mom, a couple of days before the Friday, before the insurance man called, and I said to my mom, Mom, can I get my room insured? She said, if she don't know, you can ask the insurance man when he comes. Anyway, the insurance man said, yes, you can insure your room. So anyway, I paid the first pound. And would you believe it, after I signed the paper, pull up everything, the house got burnt down because that lady said to me, I must go and get my room insured. How many months or years after you insured the house? The house burnt down. If I tell you this, you will not believe me. Was the house burnt down in less than two weeks after Philly farming and everything. What? After that lady said to me, 
go and get your room insured. And he insured me, me room at the time. I think it was £5,000 in them days. Yeah. Because in them days, you got 50 pence was a hell of a lot of money. Because at the time your wage was £7.50 a week. Yeah. That's I remember that. In, in the 70s. And I use that. I get the £5,000 £5, and I bought a house with that. Oh, you bought a house? I bought a house, that's when I got married, that's why I said, that, oh, I get married to my wife, to my girlfriend then. Yeah. I bought a house on 155 Beresford Street. Where is this? That is Mosside off Clement Road. This is Manchester. That is Manchester, Mosside. Yeah. yeah. And we get married, but unfortunately, they, they, we never lasted. Oh. We got divorced, so. What, you cheated on her or something? No, 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 well, I never cheated on her. Okay. I didn't cheat her on her. But there's certain things what she expect, what we both expect of each other, it, it never happened. So I just leave it as that, you know. Right. How many, uh, after you get married, how long marriage last, I said? Okay. Well, let's say I have my first child. We, we did, when I had my first child with her, we weren't married. But when I have the second child, we was married. Okay. And I think when me and her split up, I think my first child was about seven. And my second child might be about four or something like that. I cannot remember. I would have to go and check okay, it. Yeah, check yeah, it out. Yeah, but well, I was about seven and one about yeah. four at the time. So, were you hurt about it? Like, yeah, well, you must hurt. Yeah. And, it, and we used to be like <laughs> Tom and Jerry. Oh, you gosh. know? <laughs> so at the time, you see, I did buy the house we were, before we were married, so they couldn't. We, we could, I couldn't. They wouldn't give me my divorce, and they can't kick her out the house because we got the two kids, and they can't kick me out the house because I, I, it's my house. So today, and I, you know, I said instead of both of us staying there, and before we hurt one another, it's best if I walk away, which way I did. I went back to my mom, and that was one of the most to me. One of the most embarrassing thing I did have to do, and I'm not ashamed to say it, is to go back after you're married, to go back and ask your parents if you can have a room back in their house. Because they would not give me my divorce until when I leave, you know. So I've to, I tell them. Anyway, today and I decide to, uh, I decide to tell them that I'm leaving the house and, I, and then I sign the divorce paper and, and we both get our divorce. You were saying your brother used to drive for someone? Yeah, my me, me brother used to drive for the Sweet Sensation. Well, at the time, they was called the Sweet Sensation, but they weren't very famous. Yeah. And it was once when my brother was driving the, the group. Who was the Sweet Sensation? Two people don't know. In Sweet Sensation, I, I can't remember, but I know one of them, I went to school with him, used to call Lira Smith. He used to play the organist. Uh, he passed away now. Uh, he used to play the organ in, in the Swiss. A lot of people in, in Manchester will remember the Swiss sensation. They sing, uh, they, they, they make number one record called Sad Sweet Dreamer. Okay, those Yeah. Okay. And my brother used to drive them before they become famous. Oh, before they? Before they become yeah, yeah. famous. But they did call the Swiss sensation, but they weren't famous. Yeah. But when my brother was driving, it was uh, two, four of them into the into his he car driving for them to Scotland. He had an accident in Scot uh, going up to Scotland, mm -hmm. which two of them got killed. What? Yeah, two of them got killed in, in the car. In, and two of the band. Two of the, the yeah. The group. Swiss two of the band. Group? Yeah. Members. Got, two of the band members at the time got killed. And then after the after they got killed, they reformed with two, with different, you know. Okay. And so that's it when it was a bad crash. Up with. Uh, it was a very bad crash because two so got killed, and yet again my brother did not get a scratch. What? He and he was not, driving. And he was driving, and the next the next guy he have to have a pin in his leg. Yeah. So uh, two die. The next guy get hurt, yeah. and my brother did not get hurt neither. Where, where were you? The guys I'm sitting, the one who died. Both of them I don't know where they were sick because I said it was in Scotland. I were yeah. I wasn't there, but I know two of them definitely got killed in it. 
So when you heard the news that your brother oh, was driving someone, what, what, you thought your brother was driving I, I, To be honest, you know, I cannot, rem I, I cannot remember if it was before the fire or after the fire, mm -hmm. but I imagine it will be after the fire yeah. when that happened. But I can't even remember when it when that happened. But I remember definitely so, so that did happen, you know. So how was, was your brother moved after that? that well, I don't know. I cannot tell her. I could, you know. You can't remember. I can't right? remember. I can't remember. He's a tough man, your brother. Well, I, well yeah, yeah. He must be, yeah. any. Yeah. He's got to because well, I know definitely two got killed. Mm -hmm. You know, one, uh, you know, a black guy, a black guy got killed, and a white guy got killed in it. Mm -hmm. And the next black guy that was in it, that was in the party. I don't think he was. The, Definitely in the group, the next guy, but he was definitely in the, in, in the car as well. Yeah. He's the one who got the pin in his leg, but my brother did not get hurt. Wow, not a no, scratch. Not a scratch, no. Oh, yeah, uh, where are we at the moment? Where, where are we doing this interview for people who don't know? We're doing this interview in Jamaica okay. at the moment. Uh, uh, have you visited Jamaica much over the years? Well, let's say I've been to Jamaica just before 91, before my dad died, then I've come 91, when my dad passed away. I came over here to my niece's wed wedding. Then I came here to Jamaica when my brother passed away, the one that of the accident. And I also came here when my mother passed away. So you can wait, say... Wait, wait. Did your parents came back to Jamaica then, you said? Yeah, me, right. they both came back to live in Jamaica. For how long they lived there? Me, yeah, me, me, me dad came back to live in Jamaica, but um, he never lived long. Yeah. He never lived long in Jamaica before. I think he only, only lived here about four years when he came back over here to live. He was only a young man when he died. Because my dad born 1923. Yeah. And he died 1991. So if you had from 23 to 91, he's only about in his 60, I think, isn't it? if you had that up. So my dad would have been a hundred years coming next year. Because about 1923 and next year, 19, yeah, yeah. you understand? So dad, my dad died over 30 odd years now. So you saying your mom and dad came over? Yeah, yeah they both went back, they both came, came back, back to Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah. But somehow my mom, my mom when she came over here, she was walking around with no, no shoes on. As I said, she's a diabetic and a nail went into her feet, yeah. you know, and uh, I, I, we never know. The children they never know in yeah. in England that my mom got hurt. Yeah. So I think some of the grandchildren said my mom is very ill over here. They're trying to amputate my mom's legs. Wow. When I know my mom work in England you know, at the hospital. Yeah. So we went to the hospital and said to the uh, that's what, and said to the hospital, if we bring her back over here, which is where my brother at the time and my sister came over here, I did not come because you need someone to stay over there to pay the fare, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm the one who fought to pay the fare. I would have paid a million pounds to get my mum back over there at the time. Anyway, my mum came over here. They wanted to come hum back to England. Yeah, my brother, my brother and sister came back, came back to over in Jamaica, Jamaica. and bring my mum back to England yeah, okay. and we get her in the hospital there and believe me when I have a look at my mom's leg and they wanted to hump and take her leg over here anyway they save her leg in England mm -hmm. but only one thing right at the there was a big hole you know a little hole like that in my mom's leg but at least it healed yeah. and she walked and my mom lived about 30 odd years after that okay. you know my mom lived 30 odd years which way they, she, if you we leave her over here they would have cut her legs off and might be should have lost her life. Okay. If you understand me, but we asked every mom lived 30 years after after all that what, happened. What year your mom died? My mom died 2011. 2011. Yeah, and she was born 1926. Right. So she was in her 80s, I think. Just gone 80s odd when my mom and lived longer than way over my dad. You know. Right. Yeah, so So Jamaica, when you when you come back to Jamaica, is it, did you say why? Uh, I might move back to Jamaica. Anything? You ever that ever pass in mind? In, in my mind, yeah. No, I, I. To be honest, I don't think I could really live, mm -hmm. live in Jamaica. I'll come on holiday, enjoy myself over here. But to say to live here, because I live in England from 
I was 13 years of age, I know I'm 71 years of age. You know, I do, I do not know Jamaica. You know, I don't know anyway, nothing about Jamaica. So, no, I think I'd rather stay in England uh, where I am at the moment. I'm quite happy over there because yeah, it's, a ni it's a nice country, England. You know, yeah. it's, it's a nice place to live. At the moment, you're in Jamaica, are you enjoying yourself now? I'm enjoying myself, but it's just a bit too hot. <laughs> Away from the heat. Yeah, yeah everything is fine. Yes. Yeah. yes. How about the food? Oh, the food is brilliant. Brilliant. Drinks? Drink. A nice bit of rum is great. Yeah. You know, you need to have a drink a bit of rum over here. Yeah, it's brilliant. If everything is lovely over here. Uh have you seen the violence in Jamaica from you being here? I haven't seen no violence, but I heard a lot of it on the news and away from what I've seen. And I think the driving over here, you know, I don't think I could drive. I would have to live in this country for a while before I really have the nerve to go and drive, yeah. you know. And I know I'm a very good driver because I've been driving over <laughs> well over 40 years. Mm -hmm. But over here, I don't think they take the. the the road thing very serious, you know. Is is uh, everybody just seem to be going too fast for my liking? That's my opinion, you know. I'm not saying they are bad drivers, but yeah, yeah. my opinion. That's you know, yeah. You be you walk on the road. You walk through towns and cities and whatever. Anyone ever like mm? want to rub you or do anything? Uh, no. Or the news? Uh, no, no. I've never nothing like that ever happened. And you've been to Jamaica a few times? I've been to Jamaica a few times, And nothing yeah. like that never and happened? And nothing around like never happened to me, no. Right. Nothing. So you think it's just a myth they're saying all this? Yeah, yeah, it's just, might be actually, some people must be very unlucky when things happen to them. Yeah. I don't know, I'm not saying not going to happen to me, mm -hmm. but it's not happened to me yet, and I hope it don't ever happen. Have you ever get mug in, in England before? No, I've never get mug. Or uh, something I'll, bad ever happened to you otherwise? Um, no, 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 nothing ever really bad ever happened to me because I've got some very good friends in, in England. No, no, nothing like that. Away from when, as I said, I was younger and I used to go to school, I used to have a problem with that one teacher. Okay, that's it. You know, yeah. Okay. Mm. So are you enjoying yourself in Jamaica? Oh, yes. Yeah, so I tell everyone, if, if they don't want to have a nice holiday, just come over here. But don't forget, when you come over here, you have to drink a bit of rum. Yeah. And that will keep you nice and cool. You know, yeah. So, are you married at the moment? Yeah, I'm married, yes. With other kids? Yeah, I've got two with my first wife and two with my second wife. I've got, I've got, uh, one will be 15 September year coming, and the next one with about 40 something. What do you mean, uh, fit? Like, my, five my, zero? my first daughter is 15 September. Is fifth, yeah, she was born oh. in. Yeah, my first daughter. Gosh, you look so young. You're right. a 50 year old child. Yeah, 50. She'll be 50 in September coming, the 28th of September. Yeah. So what's the secret? I don't know. A lot of rum, a lot of drinking. <laughs> because you have to drink to survive yeah. <laughs> with the cold over there. You know, but I, I know in, 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 in England I drink a lot, of mostly whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in, when I'm here in Jamaica, you know, I drink the rum. Have you had any illness? Away from, no, not really away from, I'm a diabetic. That's all illness I've got. But as I said, in well, England, type, one, said two. type two. And away from that, you get good medication in England. So, so explain to people what's a type two diabetes. Type two diabetes where you have to, if, if you don't control your, uh, your, your diet, yeah. you find out you, your eyes go a bit blurry and things like that. And then, you know, it upset your organ inside, and it's best if for you to make sure you go and check, take regular blood tests. If you, you know, do you exercise? I do a lot of exercise. I go to the gym like four days a week. Wow. You know, I go a bit of swimming because everything is in in, in England. Here, you know, you go I do a bit of swimming and a bit of sauna yes. and things like that. Yeah. So that help you? Does that help a lot, yeah. And at which way I test my sugar level all the time because I've got a machine. You go to over, the doctor give you the machine in England, you know, or you can buy them yourself yeah. and, and check your sugar level. Once it's not over eight or things like that, 
Best to keep it under the, that number. Yeah. You know, the lowest you can get is five. If you can get it to five and keep it between five and six, it's brilliant. So are you taking tablets or what? I take, I take tablets and I'm also taking insulin. Insulin? Yeah. The injection? The injection, yeah. yeah. Alright. So now I'm over here, right? I bring it with me, you know, I take it and then only, I only take that once a day. I take it like eight o'clock in the morning and I don't take it again till the following morning. When did you found out that you have that? I, I think I found out in 2000 when I found out I just started losing weight and I mean when I mean losing weight I was like skeletal mm -hmm. you know yeah and I don't, even the doctor at the time never I don't know if I did used to go to them or not at that time but I went there to someone said to me oh you're losing so many weight anyway I decided to go to the doctor and that's when they test me and if they say yes you 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 are a diabetic and then they start giving me the tablets and then I start putting my weight on and this is what I still look now right. you know so are you supposed to be drinking in here <laughs> let's go back into that I'm not supposed to be drinking but if if you got to drink I mean you just you, because we are diabetic that doesn't mean you can't but that's just that's cheap they just go and take you and bury you there and done <laughs> you know you got to do something to survive yeah. you know why you don't make a, a meal of it? What about your wife? Is she upset that you drink? Well, when it's funny thing when I'm... I don't drink a lot when I'm home. Mm. But when I was younger, no, she don't upset at all. You know, she might say to me, stop drinking, but you know, I, I don't take no notice of her, to be honest, you know, which way I should have. But as I say, you got to have a drink. Because if you don't have a drink, you got to eat, tell me. Yeah. Everybody got to eat. Somebody got to drink. So <laughs> once you don't overdo it, yes. that's how right. I look at it. So you keep on, um, you keep your, like, you seem like you're not good health and that. Well. Like, you watch what you eat? I, eat, I watch what I eat, yeah. Like it, what do you cut out? Well, if, if it's best if you can cut out all the starchy food, like, you know. Uh, for instance, you're teaching people now, go on. Yeah, it, the, the, uh, the yam, those is starch, got a lot of starch yeah. in it. It's best if you could get like potatoes and things like that. It's, those are good, good meal for you okay. to, to eat, potatoes. You know, but anything with that have a lot of starch in it. Rice got a lot of starch in it, or something in it, and things like that. You know, I used to go to, I used to, when I used to go to, do, to the only thing when my doctor used to say to me, not to eat a lot of it, is mangoes. I don't know why. But I love mangoes, you know, and I know in England I don't eat a lot of mango because you, you can't afford to buy it over there because it's so expensive, you know. But away from that, now I'm in Jamaica and I come when the mango season is over so I'm still not eating any. <laughs> <laughs> so overall, you think you have a happy life? Oh, I have a quite happy wife since I get married second time. No, happy life. Yeah, happy life, yeah. And happy wife. <laughs> happy, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Since I, you know, yeah, everything's brilliant since uh, second. Yeah, everything is brilliant. Okay. Yeah. You're happy. I'm happy. Quite happy. What legacy do you want to, you like to leave for like your younger generation and your, your family? So when you pass and go like fifty years after. This. Fifty years from <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> Have respect yeah. to the elder, yeah. like I did when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Because these days, now we look at these kids, and if you say a word to them, they they're ready to beat you up or do something. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, have respect to your parents, the mayors of all your mother, mm -hmm. because something when your father gone and leave you, your mother never do. Yeah. So I tell you, all these youngsters. No matter who you are, always respect your mother. If you don't ever respect your father, which way you should respect both of them. But your mother come first. I just never like your old man. Your old man too wicked to we. That's your father? Yes. So, and go so bow. And he head back as a boss. Yeah. And we are bow on me, we bow on me go so. And look how the policeman said, don't do it again. You know, give me a feature pop the man, you know. Yeah. He give me a bench warrant. I'm dead when I go there tomorrow and I'm dead, I go dead, you know, but yeah, no. That's my intention, I mean, I don't know, 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 the end thing I'm going to love him do it, you know, yes. he have to have it. Yes. So, I love the country, sir, it's better than the gun.
he, he left and decided to live in England and then I certainly went to England with that drive you know that you know, I wanted to do well academically because I was in the top class there was a set curriculum that we all had to follow but I certainly wouldn't mind to be an advisor to the minister Jamaica is home and, and also I find Jamaica to be so different to the rest of Ireland I have never ever had any experience like that in Jamaica I think Jamaica is one of the most fantastic places in the whole world. I was riding a bicycle delivering my juices and my food round town. And I came up with a power punch with pumpkin seed, peanut, you know, a little while you are work, the food don't even finish assimilating yet. So the body fails to function normally and does not produce its own pancreatic juice, which is called insulin. She said, look on my face. May I breathe good? You know what? True medicines are judged by the quality of the results, not by the promotion that is obtained. It's me alone finding my seat for myself. Him direct me. And where was this? It was at Windsor Road in Spanish Town. And I said, why? The woman they have bomb in her bag, you know. We not walk near her at all, you know, man. To me, I see Islam as a true way of life. Before the day finish, Allah provides something for me. Buy from me and say that it tastes different from the, the Christian chicken. We would get bottles at night and fill them with peeny wallies said yes i know him that's my stepfather and that was when they allowed him to come in i realized i was way above their expectations sonny had a son and um, we started going out together and he was my first boyfriend i was very sociable and they'd never quite met anybody like me he had met a whole bunch of these Jamaican men and they were just partying, having fun. Never, never, how could I live in a place like this? So salubrious, so beautiful, so exquisite. People in the club not really have the same mindset what me have. Me is, for people, me is more a community person. I want to see this community better and try to make this beach what it's supposed to be. You know, because it, this beach can generate a lot of income for a lot of we in our community, you know? Yeah, man, and we chop you out, we make you up with money, we don't get no pay from nobody. We just do it from our own. If you can help, you don't help. We don't want no money from you. But if you can give you something for fix up your place, then. It's a beautiful environment. So we're there and we are doing what we can do what is possible. We need help, you know, because we don't have the cash.